good, Kitten Internet, and welcome to a Let's Analyze Wild Arms 2. Um, we haven't had a Let's Analyze for Wild Arms 2 yet. Uh, technically, this is the third time I've recorded this. Thanks, me. Um, and I wanted to go over some things, so unfortunately, that means that you're not going to see my process. Get a kitty eye instead. Uh, you're not going to see as much of my process. I'm going to try to briefly go back over through it, but I've already figured out everything. And... Cannon's a weird character. So, first off, this is a regular ordinary random encounter. Um, this is with Balloons, my traditional target. Uh, this is just outside of Mariabool, or just outside the town of Maria in Mariabool. Uh, weird. And I've discovered several things. First off, uh, this normal attack. This attack... Just normal attack so that normal attack outside of force point increases and so on um, because that is increasing it and I'm going to cover that in a different video when I cover personal skills um, but the normal attack so you'll notice that cannon at this point has 132 strength and 172 ATP or attack power um, basically her weapon, the, uh, Basarad, is plus 40 attack. Sweet. Uh, so what the base attack is, it's two-ish times ATP. So against a balloon, it should do roughly 344 damage, plus or minus 10% of that. Uh, the plus or minus 10% is the randomization roll, and this is extremely similar to the way Wild Arms 1 works, for reference. The main difference is that I can control for this better. And I'm going to be able to control for this way better once I actually um, get toward later on in the game, when I have all of my abilities, because the control is based off of your level. So... It's always been really hard for me to do these analyze things when I discovered that your increasing force levels increase the amount of damage that you do. And turns out that it is exactly that. It's increasing force levels, not your current force level. So for instance, if I have a level one character that I somehow modify all of the stats to do, say, have a 999 attack stat, whatever, and then I also have a level 99 character with a 999 attack stat. They will do the identical amount of damage, even though the level 99 character is going to start with significantly higher force points. And I have not started diving into the code to figure out how to edit these things yet. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, that's going to be for a later date. Uh, at the moment, what I'm trying to do is figure out how Cannon's abilities work. Because I had noticed in a previous video that, like... Um, the, this left edge ability was actually doing less damage than Cannon's normal basic attack, and I wasn't quite sure what was going on with that. So I figured it out the hard way. Um, hold on a moment. There we go. Sorry, uh, things are trying to hide behind windows again, and that gets really annoying. So this spreadsheet here, um, this is actually what I've been using, although this is actually a copy. This is the one I have been using. But anyway, um, this is the spreadsheet that I've been using to try to figure out what's going on with Cannon's abilities. Because the first thing that I notice is that Force Levels do not increase Cannon's attack power on her abilities. So it doesn't matter what Force Level I'm at, Left Edge is always going to do the same amount of damage. Something else that doesn't affect it is our buffs. So anything that in it looks like anything that increases ATP doesn't affect Cannon's abilities. And that's what actually made me figure out what's going on. Cannon's abilities are not based off of ATP at all. It's not using that stat. That's the reason why the stat increases for increasing force abilities don't do anything. That's why the stat increases for casting hyper weapon on somebody doesn't do anything. It's really simple. It's because she's not using that stat. What she's using instead... <laughs> is that she is using strength. So, in this case, her weapon makes zero difference, which if you look at the attack animation, it kind of makes sense because you're looking at it as, all right, Cannon is going to, 
let's actually use it for an example. So for left edge, Cannon is actually reaching out. Oh, actually, that one she does use a weapon. Um, but for things like, say, Arc Kick. Nope, she actually... Yeah, she is using her weapon. Never mind, that doesn't make any sense at all. Anyway, um, turns out that Cannon... I think that was up here before. No, don't maximize, computer. Cannon is using Strength Stat. These are what I've gathered from lots of collecting of data. Um, I probably need to collect a lot more data to know the exact numbers or just look into the code of the game. Uh, you can't see everything, can you? No, you're getting cut off. Windows. One moment. What is it with Windows and trying to scroll too much? No, oh, that'll work. Okay, so, um... So, um... So, Left Edge, for instance, it's 2.8 times plus or minus 0.2-ish times strength. Um, I think if I gathered enough data, I'd be able to get the exact numbers, because these numbers are weird, but they're consistent. It doesn't matter what force level I'm at, it all will always do those numbers. It doesn't matter what stat increases I have. I also double-check to see, okay, is this sorcery? No. Had nothing to do with sorcery. Is this response time? So I thought that, like, Cannon being a very fast character, it'd be interesting if she was using these abilities using speed, but it isn't. Uh, Quick has no effect on it. And nor does changing equipment to change your... Excuse me, um... Change your response time stats. What does have an effect is changing your equipment to change your attack stat. Or not attack. Yeah. Strength. There we go. That's the term. So these are all of Cannon's abilities. So... So we have Left Edge, which I've already shown. We have Pike Kick. Pike Kick is Cannon just kind of doing a dive bomb kick. We have Drive Cut. Drive Cut is just like a, an above cut and then an explosion afterward. Wire Fist is using Cannon's grappling hook. Like so. And having an explosion. I just did that. Arc Kick is probably my favorite of them, just because it's fast. Uh, that's the dive up and down again. Vortex Cut. I'm going in a order because I my abilities are in the wrong order. I need to resort them. Vortex Cut, which is basically just, I don't know, punching it. Phalanx. which is generating that weird Kamehameha-style blast, and Eagle Claw. You'll notice, however, that each of these do subsequently more damage, and if you look at the data that I have up there, my mouse over here, I do have the mouse visible intentionally, you'll see that each of them do sub more damage. So, basically, when it comes to cannon, and using just the abilities, the answer is you should always use the highest force ability that you have available to you. That's it. There's no, there are no resource expenditures as a result of these abilities. Um, that's what GAT is for. There's no reason to use one ability over another. There's no elements associated with any abilities as far as I can tell. Uh, one thing I haven't tested yet, and come to think of it, I should probably go test that is whether any of the elements... Hmm, I can do that during this video. Yeah, let's go do that. I know where I can test that, but I'll get to that in a bit. I'm gonna test whether uh, elemental rings have any effect on cannon's damage, because I have all of the elemental rings, and I know of a place where everything's weak against the same element. Two of them, in fact. Um, next up, things that I've tried testing are gats. So, at this point of the game, this is at the... So, I'm releasing this on... Um, November 11th. This video is being recorded November 10th. 
So order-wise, this is just after I finish Judica's Diablo Pillar. And Cannon doesn't have Gat level 3 or Gat level 4 yet. So, in fact, if I remember right, the first time I went through the game, Cannon never actually got Gat level 3. I had 1, 2, and 4. Anyway, um, so I can't test the higher level ones. But interesting thing is that a Gat level 1 and using Left Edge which will look like this. It looks like Cannon uses some extra martial art moves, basically. And then performs the same gat, or same ability. That does the same amount of damage as Vortex Cut. So Vortex Cut is 75 FP. This was expending 25 FP and actually using 20. If I got level one and instead pike cutted, uh, sorry, it, one note gets a little weird. For some reason, one note's accepting controller inputs. It's weird. If I do that one instead, a gat plus pike, which is again, this is just gat level one. It's the same martial art move and a different attack. That does a little bit more dam or a little bit less damage than Phalanx. Which is a little weird because that would put it between uh, that it's slightly less damage than Phalanx. That could actually just be data error. Um let me scroll down a little bit. What I've determined is that it does uh 9.13 plus or minus 0.3 times strength. Um, what that could be is that it's actually doing the same damage as Phalanx, and I'm just not noticing. Which makes me wonder, Cat level 1 and Drive Cut, how much does that do? Thirteen, nineteen. that's still, that's between Phalanx and Eagle Cut on damage. Cat level 2 and Wire Fist. I know roughly how much damage they do off the top of my head just because I've done this so much. Even though my last recording was a while ago, actually. You'll notice that Gat Level 2 has more martial arts associated with it. That does about what Eagle Claw does. Which means Gat Level 2 Arc Kick, on the other hand, is the most damaging attack that Cannon has. Sort of. Yeah, that does slightly more damage. So, one thing that I want to test out, which I'm not going to bother testing out until I have GAT levels 1 through 4, is uh, I'm probably just going to do an entire video of nothing but the actual force expenditure abilities. But I think what's actually happening is that GAT level 1 is a melee attack on top of a force ability. Which means that I don't think it's actually the same damage as Vortex Cut, so much as in the position that I'm currently testing at, which is at a 100 FP with best luck, that it happens to be the same damage formula as Vortex Cut at the moment. The heck am I touching under the desk? Oh. Magnetic bag clip. Um, I think that's more coincidence than anything, but I don't want to start testing this until I actually have all of Cannon's GAT abilities. If that makes any sense to you. So, long story short, when you're using cannon, you should just use the highest force level ability, right? No. That's what this other spreadsheet is actually for and indicating. So, when you cast a particular spell, uh, here, I'll show you. I intentionally made sure that I had... Let's turn the bottom so I, Yeah, I made of three hype weapons into those little crest things that are one-use items. That way, Cannon can cast hype weapon on herself. And what this does is that it actually increases Cannon's ATP by 10%, sort of. So you notice that said 132 up. Notice her strength is 132. 
So it basically adds her strength to ATP again. That's what Hype Weapon does. And I'll cover this in more depth when we actually go through Lilka's spells, which we're not too far off of. I want Lilka to be higher level first before I do it, just because, well, higher level and also have her force level four ability. But it doesn't matter who casts it. It's still, you're adding that character's strength to your ATP. Which means, instead of doing, for a basic attack, um, 2 plus or minus 1 times ATP, you just keep adding strength to each time that you cast a hype weapon. Which is nuts! And what that also means, and it just dawned on me that my... Um, no, that's not correct. Uh, it's been a few days since I last did this. Oh, wait, no, that is correct. Okay. Which means that, for instance, all that it takes for left edge to be worthless is having some way of increasing your attack that would include your weapon and your strength, or end castings of hyper weapon, <clears throat> by 105.6. That's easy. It's just really easy to do. Um... There's basically no reason to use left edge. Even at my current level. Like, I have increased my force three times. Take a look at how much damage my melee attack does. 748. Take a look at how much damage Gat does. Or not Gat, um, left edge does. 403. I'm already doing more damage with my melee attack. And all that my force is increased by is three levels. This is the main problem with cannon, and I've never noticed this. I always knew that cannon's abilities are a little weird on how they worked. What I didn't realize is that cannon's abilities go against optimizing cannon. I mean, it's true that cannon has very few weapons in the game. Uh, she primarily uses just her strength, and that's generally fine, but there's no reason to use most of her abilities until you get to the high level ones, and if you're using the high level ones, chances are you're in a boss combat where you're constantly fluctuating your force ability, which means that her strength might still be higher. So you actually have to increase her strength by 1,386 in order for Eagle Claw to be better. That's probably not going to happen. Uh, that's increasing her, or sorry, increase her ATP. That would be increasing her ATP higher than the maximum stat, which I think Wild Arms 2 actually lets you do. But it's... Uh, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. What's more realistic is everything from Le Wire Fist on up. Everything that is a Gat level 1, and potentially even Gat level 2. Just keep in mind, I have Force Increased twice. Oh, that was a gat. That's not going to... Yeah. Uh, so, that is doing more damage than my melee attack. That's doing less. So, even just increasing my force level a couple of times, which can happen in a normal combat right now, cannon's already at the point where drive cut's useless. The, I really shouldn't have bothered with the F... Or the, like, um... Uh, hold on a moment. I'm actually going to look up the names of these things because I have time this time. My previous recording of this was a lot longer for reference. Uh, that's because I did all of the research on this again and showed it off and I've decided it's not worth doing that this time. By the way, hi, how are you? I'm talking a lot. And I haven't had any water today now that I think about it. Hmm. Anyway, I'm just going over the personal skills area and then we're going to go teleport So yeah, the up parameter ability, this was probably a waste of personal skill points on cannon. Because I think, and I'm going to be doing this later on, um, so my plan on doing the let's analyze personal skills one is going to be with when we can actually freely level Ashley. Because that's going to be the easiest way for me to get gobs and gobs of personal skills. Uh, which we, that's going to be disc two before we do that. 
and I'll analyze how these actually work. But like in my mind, I shouldn't have bothered with this. I should have just done this. And I don't know if that increases P uh, ATP versus just increasing strength. Or maybe it actually refactors a formula on physical attacks. I have no idea. Anyway, there's one other thing I wanted to test out, and that is the effect of elemental weaponry. Luckily in this game, it's really easy to tell if elemental weaponry is doing anything. So first off, we're going to teleport to Yeah, let's go to the area where everything's on fire. Or everything's on ice, not fire. Sorry, a little tired. I have the odd boots equipped for reference, so random encounters should be more frequent. I do still have that equipped, right? Yeah, I have the odd sandals equipped. Don't know why it's taking this long. There we go. Okay. So, cannon, normal attack. 660. Cannon, normal attack without, 220. Okay. So, it's doing roughly triple damage on a weakness. That's good to know. Now, what happens if I left edge? No increase. Okay. What happens if I get one left edge? That looked like an increase, didn't it? I mean, it could be that I just got really lucky on the attack, that's why I'm going to reproduce it, but... I think my theory about it being a physical attack plus regular attack might be accurate. Nope, that's actually the same amount of damage. Never mind. Okay. So, that means that elemental weapons have no effect on cannon, at least for the early ability. I need to get cannon all the way up on force points really fast, so give me a moment, and I'm gonna do exactly that. to Mystic. Oh, wait. I can Mystic Holy Grail? Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Hold on a moment. Hold on. I'm gonna clear out all of these. This may have just become a second, uh, let's analyze merged into one. Okay. Cannon, just mystic, uh, mini carrot yourself. What can I mystic now? I mean, I know I can mystic the rings. That's fine. And I'm going to do that. I can mystic Holy Grail. I'm going to guess that's Thanatos X. You know what? Let's find out. Just looking straight into the camera. Yep, it's Thanatos X. Nice. I did not realize I can do that. That would have made that previous dungeon so much easier. So much easier, if I would have known. Anyway. I'm going to go back to doing what I was planning on doing, which is fire ringing them. I only want to deal with one enemy at a time. And you can FP shift. This will definitely get cannon up to 100 force points. 
Okay. Now that we've got that, time to see if any of these abilities use an element. No. I mean, it's really easy for me to tell at a quick glance because triple damage is really obvious. I'm gonna guess no. But then again, that's how I found out that one of uh, Jack's abilities in Wild Arms 1 actually used the element on, that it's equipped on. Really need to reorganize that. It's because of the order that I gained them in. That's the order that they're currently in. I'm gonna go with a no. Yep, nope, okay. So that means that elemental rings, if you're using cannon special abilities, do nothing other than absorb that element. So I guess like, actually come to think of it, that can be useful because cannon's really pretty bad on magic defense. So, for instance, if I was in a frozen wasteland like this with a bunch of ice enemies, only it was actually a frozen wasteland that wasn't super low level, I could equip an ice ring on cannon and then just have her constantly use her non-weapon-based abilities. Which makes me wonder if a P attack even works. So much to analyze. So yeah, long story short... Cannon's abilities appear to be all entirely based on strength, with nothing, and I mean nothing, based off of her weapon attack power. Which means that there's not really a reason to upgrade her weapons if you're using, or, or have anything to increase her ATP. Alternately, there's no reason to use her abilities if all you're going to do is cast Hype Weapon three times. Well, that's about it. Um, maybe I won't have this video go live on Wednesday. Nah, I could probably use the break. Anyway, this was just a quick, hey, look, this is how we're doing. Um, I'm actually doing pretty well. Today is the day that I've had my lowest blood pressure recorded since I was in the hospital. So that's nice. It's actually in the normal range on both systolic and diastolic. It's actually the first time I've been in normal range and diastolic in... When did I have my appendix out? Year and a half? Two years? Yeah. Long time. Anyway. I hope... I don't know... I really don't know who these Let's Analyze videos are for other than me. But I hope you've enjoyed this. And I'll talk to you next time, Internet. Bye!